Good morning and welcome to Daily Devo. I'm Pastor Jonathan with Robert Stowe UMC and it is great to see you on this Friday morning, July the 3rd, which means tomorrow we're going to celebrate the 4th of July. Uh, happy birthday, America, and I hope that you will celebrate safely this weekend. I, I am praying for you specifically and I'm praying for your safety and the safety of our community and our nation and our world. Uh, as we experience the 4th of July like we haven't before. As we continue, uh, today is Friday, and this is part five of a series of daily devos called Be Yourself. And I am sharing what I am learning through this book called uh, Self to Lose, Self Defined by Marilyn Van Seal. Uh, and specifically, it's about a personality test, which I haven't been talking a lot about. Uh, she gets into that more in depth through the book, but it's called the Enneagram. Uh, but she uses that to talk about uh, this biblical idea of the New Testament, Jesus uh, and the writings of Paul, to lose ourselves for the sake of God, therefore we might truly find ourselves. So that's what we've been talking about all week. If this is the first video you're tuning into, I would recommend that you go back and watch parts one through four so that what we talk about today will make sense. Uh, but we, we're talking about the authentic self, the true self, uh, which for us as Christians who believe in Jesus is the new self that we receive and that the Holy Spirit is transforming us into every day. Uh, because we have put off the old self, the nature that we're born with. Uh, we live in a broken and fallen world. So when we come into this world, uh, because the world is not as it should be, neither are any of us. Because we learn these adaptive coping mechanisms that were never really meant to be the life that God intended us to live because we were intended to live in this world as it should be, not as we found it. So we develop these unhealthy behavior patterns and these uh, coping skills and defense mechanisms and relating to people and preserving ourselves. But eventually we're called to mature and let go of that. And Jesus invites us to even let go of the life we're trying to grasp and lose it so that we actually might obtain and save the eternal life that God has for us. So we're continuing that conversation today. And today is the third invitation that we hear from Jesus in Luke 9, 23. He says, if anyone would come after me or be my disciple, that person must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. So two days ago, we talked about what he meant by denying the self. Yesterday, we talked about what it meant to take up our cross and crucify that old self and put it to death. Today, we're looking specifically at the invitation to actually follow Jesus, which is a, a proactive thing that we do after uh, and while we deny ourselves and take up our cross. And how often did Jesus say we're going to have to do these things? Once? Once maybe at an altar call or at a retreat? Uh, weekly? Every Sunday when we go to church, we'd come to the altar again, deny ourselves, take up our cross daily, and follow Jesus? How often did he say to do these things? Daily. Daily. He knew that we would have to make this a daily part of our lifestyle. Every day, we're looking for ways that our false self, our adaptive self, is manifesting itself. And we're choosing to renounce a relationship with that self, crucify it with Jesus, uh, nail that self to the cross. So what's raised to newness of life every day as we walk in him is... Um, the life of Jesus manifests through our own life, through our own personality, through our own gifts and strengths and the unique ways that God is calling us to bear his image in this world. So as we look at what it means to follow Jesus, uh, Marilyn Van Seal uh, goes into the original language uh, and what these words meant in the original language when they were written in the New Testament. And where it says follow, that word in the original language means to accompany, to express union, to be a likeness, and to go in the same way. So in a sense, Jesus is saying, be with me, uh, be like me, and go in the same way I do. Many of us believe in Jesus, and that's important. Uh, the Bible says if we believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord and confess, or if we confess with our heart, mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts, there we go, that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. But the Bible also tells us that even the demons believe. Believing in Jesus is not enough. Discipleship is about actively following him, being with him, being like him and going in the same way that he went. I want to give you a verse for today in addition to Luke 9.23, which is what we've been looking at every day. The verse I want to give you specifically for today is 1 John 2.6. 1 John 2.6. I would challenge you to go and Google this verse, uh, pull it up on your phone or in your web browser, and look at it in multiple translations. Maybe use Bible Hub or Bible Gateway, one of those websites. Because one translation says, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus lived. We must actually walk in the way that Jesus walked. If we, if we say or claim that we live in Jesus, I am so sorry for the lawnmower that's going by right now. <laughs> if we claim to live in him, 
but we don't live as he lived or walk in his ways, uh, then our very faith, our very, the very authenticity, our, uh, blah, blah, blah. let me start over. The very authenticity of our belief in Jesus is thrown into question. So then we ask, how did Jesus live? And she says specifically, she sees in the life of Jesus him doing two things, letting go and walking into his destiny. He actively let go of his life and he freely lived into his destiny. He let go of that life that you and I so often tend to grasp uh, because he knew that the life the Father would give him if he let go of that life, uh, which this is why, by the way, Jesus modeled a perfect life. He modeled a perfect life of letting go of that life that you and I are tempted every day to grasp and hold on to because he knew that that life wasn't real and it wouldn't last. And therefore, he received the eternal life that the Father had for him, the life that was in perfect union with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the life that was completely in tune and in union with the will of the Father so that everything the Son did was a manifestation of what the Father wanted. That's how you and I are called to live. So he let go of that life. You can look in Philippians 2, the first several verses, the first 12 verses of Philippians 2, to get this picture, uh, the first half of what's known as the Jesus Creed in Philippians 2 is a picture of him letting go. And the second half is a picture of how God exalted him as he fulfilled his destiny. Uh, and Marilyn Van Seal goes into some specifics of how Jesus let go. He let go of his possessions. He let go of his own sense of power. Uh, and many people get tripped up by this. We picture Jesus as kind of a superman because he was God in the flesh and he, he could do anything. And he had, had the power to perform all these miracles. But he really didn't. The power that Jesus demonstrated was the power of the Father flowing through him as he yielded his own temptation to self-grasp for power. Uh, that's what's going on in the life of Jesus when we see him performing miracles. So he let go of power. Uh, he let go of family. Uh, it wasn't that he didn't love his family, uh, but hy he used hyperbole in the Gospels to talk about how he loved the Father and the purposes of the Father even greater than his love and his allegiance for his biological family. Now you know he loved his family because look at the way he interacted with his mother Mary and John while he was hanging on the cross. But he loved the Father more and he wanted the kingdom more. Um, he let go of his reputation. He certainly let go of his safety, didn't he? And he let go of his rights. Uh, and we, we live in a society that prides ourselves on our rights and we fight for our rights. And Jesus never fought for his rights. In fact, he fought far more for the other. He fought far more for the vulnerable and the outcast uh, and those who had been cut off from community, those who were spiritually broken than he ever fought for himself. In fact, he laid his very life down for those that he loved, which includes you and me. And he humbled himself so that he could serve, love, heal, forgive, and invite people to a life of freedom and abundance. And he talked in the Sermon on the Mount about what this looks like. Uh, he talked about the blessedness of the poor in spirit, right? The meek, the humble, uh, the forgiving. And he invited people to love their enemies and turn their cheek. All of this is uh, very radical and countercultural, but this is how Jesus lived, to be generous and give to those in need, to care for others more than themselves. So the invitation today is to actually follow Jesus and walk as he walked instead of clinging to our identities and our possessions and our positions and our rights uh, and our, our own power and control and to lay our very lives down for the sake of the other and say, you know what, being compassionate towards you, forgiving you, being loving towards you uh, is more important than me trying to cling to this false self I've created for myself so that I can feel a false sense of safety and security. And once I let go of that, I can finally enjoy the power and control, the esteem and affirmation, and the security and survival that God will make sure I get because He's the one fighting my battles. He's the one looking out for me. And in the same way that He provided every day for His Son Jesus, He also wants to provide for me. As I walk in the way of my rabbi, as I actively put my feet behind Him and step where He stepped, live as He lived, walk as He walks, this is so challenging. This is uh, by far one of the hardest of the days that we've talked about yet, but this is the invitation of Jesus. Discipleship is not just about belief, and it's not just about knowledge. Discipleship is an active word that means apprenticeship. So my question for you today is how can you be an apprentice of Jesus? If Jesus is truly your Lord, if Jesus is your master, 
What does it look like for you to be an apprentice? Just in the same way that Jesus was an apprentice uh, of his father Joseph the carpenter, we are called to be spiritual apprentices of Jesus. And that's an active thing. It's not just about what we believe in our head, but it's about what we live out uh, in our relationship with God and with others. So, I know that was a lot. I pray this encourages you today. I, I pray that this makes you think a little bit. I pray that it makes you do some self-inventory. Uh, that's the journey I'm inviting you on to take with me, especially during this very challenging season, because these are the kinds of times where our faith is truly tested. And we're challenged to say, is my faith legit? You know, Sunday, uh, I think I calculated, and, and Sunday for our church will be the 105th day of COVID-19. Uh, that we have been actively responding to COVID-19 and having to shift what we do and how we do it because of this pandemic. Um, and these are the times in which our faith is tested, where we say, okay, in the midst of COVID-19, is my faith still holding up? Uh, am I still walking in the ways of Jesus? Or did I have all this other stuff that I was doing before or rhythms that I would go through that, that I kind of molded into a false sense of faith and religion uh, when God is really calling me to, to look inward and say, Yes, Lord, you are still my God, and insofar as it depends on me, I will still love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I will still love my neighbor as myself, even when it looks drastically different. And there's so much loss during this season. We've lost so much of what we used to call normal. So my prayer is that God would give us a new normal, uh, that God would use this time to help us prioritize, to show us what's really important, to maybe, maybe even remove some of the, the dying branches that we were clinging onto before or the unhealthy patterns we were living in or uh, the things that we were um, prioritizing in a way that didn't reflect what God really wants for, for us and maybe uh, find our stress levels and our anxiety levels, um, our bitterness levels, our, um, any of those things decreased as a result of this time. That's the work that I'm praying for and only God can do that. That's some powerful stuff, especially when we're so tempted to feel lonely and depressed and anxious about the future because so many things are uncertain now. So anyway, I know that was a lot more that I tagged onto the end there, but I just wanted to speak out loud the prayers that I'm praying for you and invite you to pray for those same things. So have a wonderful, safe uh, 4th of July weekend. Uh, we won't be back together for Daily Devo tomorrow. It's Saturday, so I'm gonna spend the morning just with my family and I'll see you back again on church uh, at church on Sunday for Worship Live at 10 a.m at the Facebook page of Robert Stowe UMC, our website, robertstowumc.com, and later posted to our YouTube channel. And then I'll see you back again for Daily Devo Monday morning. God bless you. This is Pastor Jonathan again. Grace and peace.